Bill O'Reilly, the biggest story of the week, sir. I think Biden uh, saying that Armageddon uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's kind of big, right? Yeah, I think that's kind of big. That would be big yeah. if Armageddon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, kind of kind of huge, kind of huge. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I think I'm going to buy that Ferrari over the weekend. Um, yeah, don't have to worry about paying for it for long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, 60 years ago, Beck, I know you're a student of history, uh, John F. Kennedy was uh, yeah. telling the nation to build fallout shelters. Yeah, you this know? month. Yeah, you might want to dig a little hole in the backyard, so... You and the fam can get in there uh, after the big one hits. Uh Shalom. This is your brother Yonathan. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth and sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Now, the Bible gives you the, 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 the history tracks a lineage all the way from Adam all the way up until now. It tells you what's going to happen in the future. It lays out the whole movie of existence. Okay? And you got to ask yourself, well, <laughs> what part of the movie are we even in? There's a future kingdom in the scriptures called Babylon the Great, where the future descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be held in captivity and it would be this would be the first captivity where they were completely detached from their heritage, who they were, the ways that they kept. OK. And they will wake back up within that captivity, prophesying against the kingdom that that's holding them. In the midst of uh, a great war, World War Three, the third woe. In the midst of the scourges that the Lord is going to send upon the earth for the iniquity of the inhabitants thereof, he's going to deliver them in the midst of that. <clears throat> we also know that, pursuing in Daniel 12 and 4, that that, you know, will be the, the, the time of the end because they will be waking back up to their heritage. Like, let me actually go get it for you guys here. This is uh, Daniel 12. Daniel 12 and 4. And I'll say this. Um, the end time started. Okay. With the crucifixion of our Lord. But even more so even now. This is Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. So the Lord is telling Daniel that the, the, the sealing of the understanding of the scriptures are going to be sealed up. Till when? Even until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And right now, knowledge is being increased. The true this bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have wakened back up to who they are and are able to understand the prophecies of the book and are measuring the times diligently by the prophecies of the book. So again, you ask yourself, if you truly believe in the scriptures, what part of the movie are we in? All right? Um... <clears throat> And Kennedy was dead serious because that thing worked for long. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, sixty years ago, Beck, I know you're a student of history. Uh, John F. Kennedy was uh, yeah. telling the nation to build fallout shelters. Yeah, you this know? month yeah, you might want to dig a little hole in the backyard so you and the fam can get in there uh, after the big one hits. Uh, now, in this third world, in this great destruction that's prophesied to come, two of the major players. OK, would be Babylon the Great, which is America, because this is where the all the northern and southern kingdom are being held together. Right. Judah and Israel will be oppressed together. And Magog. Which is Russia. OK. The Lord's going to put the hooks back in their jaws, because when they when they were the Soviet Union, they were in a very uh, a fervent spirit, man. And after the Cold War, that, that spirit kind of died back, but it's coming back into the forefront. So the major players that are prophesied to be in this third world, okay, are in the forefront now. And not only are we talking about it, but, you know, your Glenn Becks, your Bill O'Reilly's, <clears throat> they're talking about it. Now, they're not talking about it in regards to biblical prophecy, but 
the Lord, you know, he, he set men up like this to, to go into particular uh, facts for information to be revealed to them. And then we could be say, oh, OK, does this line up with scripture? OK, because that's that's the that's the surefire way to tell what's the truth. If it lines up with scripture. OK, that's how we filter information. So you got guys like this talking about it. It's happening, in, you know, in the world. We're able to see it in the scriptures. And that's how we know, man, look, we're getting close. Because what we long for is a new kingdom, a new society where righteousness is pushed forth. And on top of that, we're in a we're in a rulership seat. Earth is gonna have new man, the earth is gonna have new management. As Elder Ariala here in Dallas often likes to say. New management, man. Now, those who are who are offering up their daily sacrifices. Bringing out the word. And, there, and all of us that believe we offer up daily sacrifices. Every day you're walking up rightly. You, you, you're, you're standing stiffly for the things of Yahweh Shemi, Yahweh Shai. You're offering up a sacrifice. But the teachers, man, many, many of the men who are, who are bringing out the 100% doctrine, who are standing stiff, like I said, like the scriptures say, those are going to be the men who are the governing body in this new kingdom, in this new regime. It's this everlasting regime. <clears throat> So let's get into some precepts and uh, and we'll just go from there. All right. All right. So first, let's go to Isaiah, the ninth chapter and the fifth verse. It says what? For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Now, confused noise. When you're on a battlefield or for those, you know, if you ever seen a movie. If you ever seen, you know, a scene where a battle is going on, what do you have? You have gunfire. You have men screaming. You have all different kinds of sounds. Confused noise, a commotion, right? And garments rolled in blood. Men losing limbs, dead bodies. This is how every war has been fought up until this time. All right? Up until the war of Armageddon, Armageddon. All right? But this shall be the burning. But this is making a, a differentiation between every other war and every other battle that's been fought. With this one that's coming up here. It says, but this shall be with burning and with fuel of fire. Let's go to uh, Revelation 11 chapter. And we'll start at the. Uh, we'll start the 10th verse. Okay, it's Revelation 11 and 10. It says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. The two prophets are the northern and the southern kingdom. And during our captivity, this last major captivity, um, we were being sent as gifts by different nations, one to another. And they were rejoicing because they had conquered us. So they were sending gifts one to another, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them. And they stood upon their feet because we were in a dead state. We didn't. We were completely disconnected from our heritage, our culture, and our way. But the spirit, we, we talked about the Daniel twelve and four, right? How we were completely disconnected, and we came back into the understanding of who we were. This is it. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And whenever we read the scripture, we always uh, think about the testimony the apostles told us uh, back when they're on Thirty Fourth Street there in New York, and uh, a guy pulled up in a limo and said. He looked at all the signs. He got out the car. He looked at all the signs that we have pursuing the prophecy, our heritage, all these things and who the wicked are, who the elite are as well. And the guy said, we spent billions of dollars to keep this information from you guys. How did you find out? And the guy got back in his limo with his security and they sped off. So uh, a great fear and we don't get to see it up close. Right. But we know it's true because we, we filter the truth through the scriptures. A great fear has fell upon those that took us captive. A great fear has fell upon the, the elites of this world and even the peons. All right. <clears throat> Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud in a chariot. So upon our deliverance, as the midst of all the, in the midst of all the, the war and destruction that's going on, um, we're going to be called up. Out of the way, you see, 
And that's where they get, that's where they even got the idea for, you know, all the alien movies and people being abduct, abducted and taken up and they try to make it seem like it's, it's a bad thing. That's deliverance for the elective Israel. That's deliverance for us. All right. Verse 12 again. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. This is literal. Okay, that's why in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, it talks about the strangeness of his salvation. Okay, verse 13, it says the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. Now, when you look at America on a FEMA map, it's broken up into ten divisions. When it's saying here the tenth part of the city fell, that's the completion of Babylon being destroyed. All right. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men, seven thousand. Seven is a number of completion. So a complete number of men. And the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the power of heaven. And then goes on here in verse 14. This is the point I wanted. The second woe is past. The second great war, World War II. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And in the midst of the third world war, that is when our deliverance takes place. You see? The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. That's beautiful. So the falling of this kingdom in this place means our deliverance. And all we have to do is stand upright for the things that our Lord has told us to. Not give in to this devil's M-A-R-K. Not give in to the ways of the world. All right now, let me get some more on those missiles. All right, because the, the UF, the ICBM missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles are also described in the scriptures. Does it say nuclear missiles? Don't be an idiot, okay? They didn't, de those are relative terms to today. When they were seeing these visions, they described them the best way that they could. Let's go to Zechariah, the 14th chapter, and the 12th verse. <clears throat> so this is Zechariah 14 and 12. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague where the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Jerusalem, remember, it's a people before it's a place. Those who are in the know, we understand who we are. We understand our heritage. We understand when the scriptures are talking about Jerusalem, it's talking about the people before the place, more so than not. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Now, while you're listening, reading to the scriptures, I want you to think about what weapon today could have this effect on a person's body, all right? Go through a process of elimination in your mind. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and then blow them away. In an instant, their flesh evaporated off of their skeleton. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Hmm, what could that possibly be? If you, if you, and we always talk about the scene from uh, Terminator with Sarah Connor when the nuclear missile went off. Great illustration. Um, let's go to Isaiah, the 24th chapter then. <clears throat> this hasn't happened yet. You know, um, some someone might think, oh, that's, that's talking about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. No. Because it's, 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 it's spoken of to happen in a future kingdom. And after that happens, it's talking about, it goes into the deliverance of our people. When you go to Second Ezra, it goes into great detail. About the, 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 the many armies and nations being burnt upon the Lord. When he says he's going to destroy them with the brightness of his coming. So, you know, uh, yeah. Because the chariots are going to be getting busy as well. Got to mention that. Isaiah 24, and let me jump down here to verse 20. It says, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard because so many missiles are going to be shotting off. It's going to cause earthquakes, which are going to lead to tsunamis, which is going to, you know, it's, it's, the earth is, is giving you details throughout the volume of the book. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. Okay, so th this place is going to be cleansed by way of fire, like it was prophesied to happen. Okay, and in the midst of all that, like the like Mr. Bill O'Reilly mentioned in the video uh, that I ran at the beginning of the lesson, 
And he, they were making jokes about building fallout shelters in their backyards. Well, the elites are doing that because they know this is something to come. That's why you've been hearing about all these these million dollar shell these billion dollar shelters with top flight security, right? Because they, they this is something that they uh, they plan for, and that they think they're going to use to prolong their rulership. When in all actuality, the Lord has them in a trick bag. These things are happening for our good and not theirs. So just a quick lesson, man, quick precepts to bring out. I, I, I watched the first minute or two of that interview with Glenn Beck, and I figured I'd bring that out. We have camp today. This is Friday. We have camp today at about 730. So I'll be out there, and then we'll be live. Um, if you get the chance, man, tune in. So with that being said, I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. I want to give double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth and sincerity. All right. May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.